All of YouTube kept saying this market couldn't move any higher except this guy. Let's go. Now, a couple months back, you can watch my video on the blow off top target or the monthly one that I put out right before that, where at the end of January, I originally discussed how I came up with the 432 target area. I'll go ahead and link that video at the end of this one so you can review it. But to summarize a little bit, I talked about how once we got above this 100% Fib extension level, the likely next magnetic area would be this 1.618 Fib area, which not only coincided with 432, but also we had this trend line that was a very long trend line that you had to actually put in log. A lot of people were talking about this trend line, but not putting it in log. But when you're dealing with prices going from 150 to 500, you have to put it into log or else it doesn't have the right fit. And so I explained how this area would likely act as resistance. And once we got into this area, then we could go ahead and likely retrace. Honestly, at the time, it seemed just a little bit crazy, but I stayed bullish through it all. After that video at the end of January, I ended up taking 69 trades, winning 45 of them, losing 16, and had eight draws. So ask yourself, are we there yet? I hope not, but like all good things, they must come to an end. And this is coming from a guy that had over a two to one win rate. Now for all of you that missed the rally, I have some good news for you. The next FIB level is 100% higher at the 262% area. Now, how likely do I think that we're just gonna run up into that area without any type of retrace? Well, I think it's unlikely. Now, I'm not saying we can't go a little bit higher and spike through this area, but then we're likely to retrace in order to cool off a bit, and that likely will be a big buy the dip moment to propel us into the end of the year. But honestly, on the monthly, there isn't anything on this chart that's really screaming bearish. And even if we flip over to the weekly, we're continuing to hold this five EMA, closing higher on a short trading week. And if you look at this volume, if we would have had another day of trading, it may have even been higher than average trading volume for the week, which is unusual for a vacation week. Typically you float up higher on low volume. Until we get some kind of signal of a trend change, the trend is your friend until the very end. Now, could earnings coming up be the next catalyst or some black swan like the market hasn't priced in with maybe banks starting to fail or something like that? Sure. Otherwise, for now, if you aren't long, then you've been wrong. Next, the Qs. You know the NASDAQ top 100. It does look a little bit different as this month we put in a doji candle. But remember, this doji candle signals indecision by buyers and sellers. This not only could reverse, but it could just continue higher. As the NASDAQ monthly isn't giving us a whole lot of an idea about what's going on, let's go ahead and look at the ratio of the NASDAQ to the S&P 500. And you can see that on this green trend line, except for 2022, where we had uh, really quite a bearish year there, uh, we went ahead once we reclaimed that. We've been holding this trend line for quite some time now. And just recently now, we've broken through that trend line. Now, typically, if the Qs are moving lower, they'll still go ahead and pull the SPY lower along with it. So ask yourself, if we still are in a bull trend, if traders are gonna start rotating out of tech, where are they gonna go next? Because that's what we wanna figure out as traders. So let's take a look. Looking at the small caps, if we look at the Russell here, we've discussed in prior videos how we've been stuck in range bound. And now that we broke out of range and this month we actually saw follow through. If we go ahead and add our FIB extension tool where you'll draw up down to your low and then out, we see that this 100% area on the extension goes ahead and aligns well with an area of distribution that we saw in the past. And this distribution went on almost for a year. So if we look at this 100% area, that takes us somewhere around 230. So maybe what this is starting to tell us is that money will be rotating into the small caps. This is why recently I started adding stocks that I track such as basic materials, and real estate to the portfolio 
as I want to go where the puck is going. Also, some not so profitable stocks like fintech, they may start to become more interesting as well. And as you can see here, I go ahead and signal and comment on over 70 equities. So if you're having trouble getting into trades, go ahead and join the Discord for $5 a month. And not only will you get the signals, but you'll get my feedback as well. Also, if IWM is going to go up another 7%, I trade TNA, which is its 3X ETF counterpart, as why make 1% when you can make 3% on each move. Now, this does work in reverse, so I'm always careful to quickly take profit on the way up and always trade with a stop loss. Now, yields, you know, I'd be happy if that's a left shoulder, this is a head, and we're putting in some type of right shoulder here. As if yields are going down, then equities most likely will be going up. And remember, if yields are dumping, then bonds are pumping. And instead of trading TLT, I like to trade its 3X ETF counterpart, TMF. Now the VIX continues to put in these lovely tail candles that show it's getting rejected. And staying under this daily 200 simple moving average is the bull trends friend. Now the VIX has been struggling to get below 13. And the VIX is showing here that pretty much all fear has left the market. Now, one last thing to look at here, if we look at the percentage of stocks trading above their 50-day moving average, we see that we're finally coming into an area where we're getting a bit stretched. Now, this also shows that we could still inch a little bit higher, maybe before reversing, but we are definitely getting there with over 80% of the stocks trading above their 50-day moving average. Hopefully all this information that I gave you makes you want to hit that subscribe button as that's all I have for now until the next video and we'll see you then.